Hello, artists. Let's set our art mindset. I want you to observe using your artist eyes, vision using your ideas, take your time creating, and remember you are an artist. Today, we're going to create a mini museum. We're looking at where artists can display their work. Today, I want you to be able to explain what an art museum is. So let's take a look at Eric Carle's Picture Museum. This is located in Amherst, Massachusetts, and Carl wanted a place to inspire a love of art making and reading. He collects, preserves, presents, and celebrates picture books and illustrations from all over the world. He also offers educational programs and hands-on making art activities. There are three art galleries, a theater, and a library. If you had a museum, what would you hang on your walls? Let's take a trip to Eric Carle's museum. Wow, what did you think of Eric Carle's museum? As an artist, what would you want to add to these picture frames? Think about it and envision your ideas. So let's talk about creating. Today you're going to create and make a miniature collection of art. What materials do you have around you that you could use? Think about your collection. A collection is a group of objects that have been gathered together. What kind of art could you make that goes together? As an artist, you want to think about unity. Unity refers to how different elements of an artwork come together and create a sense of wholeness. Think about lines, shapes, your materials, your subject matter, your color, the patterns, the theme and the idea. An idea is where we can use our imagination, our memories, dreams, inventions, and expressions. A subject is like a portrait of people, maybe animals, or we focus on nature. A theme could focus on family, feelings, and even friends. Let's take a look at some artists who created miniature works of art. Willard Wiggin is known for the world's smallest handmade works of art. He has to use a microscope in order to create and see what he's creating. It takes him months to complete his artwork. In this picture, you can see the four seasons of trees. It's in the eye of a sewing needle. Lorraine Lutz began a project called 365 Paintings for Ants. She completed one small painting every day for an entire year. Notice her set of materials are the same and her subject matter focuses on animals. Shay Aaron focuses on the food. She creates miniature tiny sculptures with lots of details for her sculptures. Kara Ladone paints miniature worlds inside tiny lockets. She's inspired by the solar system. So my artists, what would you want to hang in your art gallery? Let's take a look at the steps and let's start creating. As always, you can use the materials that you have at home. Step one. Use your imagination to create a museum wall with your artwork. Step two, create your frames and add artwork for your museum. 
Step three, color neatly. And step four, fold your floor upwards and make a slit to make your gallery pop up. Let's take a closer look at this lesson. For this project, I looked around the house for a white sheet of paper, some scrap paper that I thought might come in handy, a pair of scissors, a washable marker, and some crayons that I had to add some color. But you can use what you would like. I'm going to turn my paper horizontal side to side for this project. You may choose to work vertical or horizontal. You're the artist. Step one, the floor. You'll notice that I'm using my hand width to measure out dots so I can connect the dots horizontally. Next, I added another line to create a baseboard for my floor. Now I'm choosing to design my floor with planks of wood. You could do a rug or other designs like a checkerboard pattern if you would like. If I'm going too fast in the video, you may pause it at any time. Don't forget, with your marker, you can always go back over the lines again to make them darker or wider using the side of your marker. You can add as much detail as you would like to your floor because you are the artist. Step two, thinking about the frames. When you're thinking about your gallery wall, you wanna think about the elements of art line, shape, and maybe some pattern. Notice my frames are usually a rectangle inside of a rectangle or a shape inside of a shape. With my finger, I'm planning out the sizes of my picture frames. But the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put my artist's name on the wall for a plaque. Now you'll notice that I only drew the top portion and the side. If I draw that line down, I may not be able to fit my name inside. So you want to write your name and then draw a shape around it. It does not have to be a rectangle. You can choose to make yours a different shape. Don't forget that you can add designs to your frame. Next, I'm planning out at least three picture frames, maybe more. Don't draw them too small. Think about using your finger to practice first before you draw with a marker. You can always start with pencil if that makes you feel more comfortable. Once you have the shape of your frame done, think about designs that you could add around your frame. Okay, I'm going to speed up the video, but you can pause it at any time. Now that my frames are finished, I want to think about how I can choose a theme or a subject matter to show unity within my artworks. For my gallery, I want to focus maybe on nature because I really enjoy being outside. So my first frame, I might draw a rainbow. Another activity I love doing is hiking outside on the hills of Tennessee. I also love the beach and I do enjoy going to the city. Draw pictures that you would want to show off in your own art gallery. After 
after you have filled up your frames, now it's time to add color. You can choose any materials to fill in your artwork. I am selecting crayons. You can think about color families, warm colors and cool colors, primary colors and secondary colors, or you can just color your artwork. As an artist, if you're using crayons, you may wanna think about the pressure. When you push down hard, you get a darker color, but just be careful to hold it near the top of the crayon when you push down hard. You can also press lightly to get a different value or color of the crayon. You can also blend two colors of crayon together or three to create your own color combination. Take your time when you start to add colors to your gallery. Artist, I hope you took your time coloring. And don't be afraid to lightly use a black crayon to add shading and value to your finished picture. Take a moment and tidy up your art area. You could be finished at this part of the artwork, but if you wanna make your gallery pop up, all you have to do is look at where you drew the line for the floor. Fold the bottom upward and crease. Next, turn your paper vertical and fold bottom to the top. So line up the edges. It doesn't have to be perfect, but take your time and do a nice crease. And then notice that seam at the bottom. That's where we're going to make one cut, just from the bottom of the paper to the top of the floor and stop. You could use a glue stick or a piece of tape to put them together. You may need to help crease it to get it to fold up, to pop up. If you have scrap paper at home, you could make another floor to go under it or to attach it to, to help it stand up. If you have more scrap paper, you may want to design it, fold it, and make a seat for visitors to look at your art gallery. When your art gallery is finished, take a moment and have some reflection time. Do you now know what an art museum is? And did you create your own art gallery? Did you use your best craftsmanship? And did you make sure you cleaned up your art area? Artists, I really hope you enjoyed this lesson and thank you for watching.